We will continue now with a summary of the hackathon pro progress. Um, so we will get started with the hackathon team um, new pipelines. So if somebody from the team could make a short summary of what has been the progress for the last couple of days and that. Oh, I will, of course, I will need to make you to give you a right to unmute yourselves. You can also share your video. Perfect. I can do the, uh, I can update you on the progress of SimSeeker. Uh, so since yesterday, uh, we've been working on a few things. First thing, uh, me personally, I was working on uh, writing a Nextflow module for, um, for validating input uh, files that uh, they have a right structure and I am almost finished with it. Uh, we all been working on the uh, designing the, the, the tool and some details regarding regarding how the tool, how the Nextflow pipeline should work. Um, we are still working on uh, making one of the aligners work, namely Parasail. Uh, there are some weird errors uh, we are getting. So if any has any uh, experience with Parasail, that would be great to join. Um, also, uh, we are working, we change our um, next floor repository structure to DSL2. I know that uh, coming from our team, he asked a question on Slack uh, regarding the DSL2. And I know that it's not uh, a recommended approach for us. Nevertheless, I think it's much easier for us to actually start using DSL2. So we are just uh, trying to go for it. Um, and also we are working on the uh, parameters validation because there will be a uh, few parameters that we, will, that we need to make sure that user correctly specify. And also uh, we are working on the, uh, the last team member, which is Pavel. Uh, he works on uh, making uh, test data. So uh, the CI can work uh, with profile test uh, with our pipeline. Perfect, thanks. Looks like great progress. Yes, uh, using the DSL2 template as we've, we've discussed before, it comes with some disadvantages. Of course, it's still in, under high, um, under a lot of development, so it could change um, anytime. But yeah, if you would like to get started with it, of course, it's also still possible. Um, good. Regarding new pipelines, if somebody else wants to uh, shortly brief on their developments of new pipelines. But I think that was mostly, that was one of the new pipelines being developed. Uh, we can switch now to the um, hackathon team existing pipelines. And I think James will brief us shortly here. Yeah. Um, yeah, so in existing pipelines, there are five that are being currently worked on, which is SARIC, RNA Fusion, Ega, MAG, Deoproteom and Proteomic, sorry, and Deoproteomics. Um, so for Ega, which is the one I'm working on with uh, Alex, Maxime, Bori, and Theseus, uh, we've put, fixed a bunch of structural things in ready for uh, the next release. Um, but also tidy up some documentation. So we've added a bunch uh, of new figures for the output documentation. And I also wrote a tutorial on how you can use um, profiles that are stored in config files for reproducible science, um, which is currently actually in the eager uh, repository, but Alex and Phil think that it might be worth moving to NF core. So if someone else is interested in how you can use that to sort of ship a file, like a settings file uh, with your publication that then means other people can use that the same settings that you ran for your pipeline on their DK cluster or, or whatever you can ask me and I can show that to you because I'd like some feedback on that. Um, things which are still running for that is I just started benchmarking uh, for a natural final publication of the tool because we're quite close to finishing but something which um, maybe if anyone has an experience with uh, is with AWS when we try to run eager with a benchmarking profile, we have lots of weird problems with files not being found and or the path in the bucket not being not working or something. So if anyone has any experience in that, please let us know. That'd be really helpful because it's been driving Alex crazy for the last like three weeks or so. Um, then for Sarek, 
they have fixed a bunch of um, issues. They have also added a couple new parameters. Mainly, the bulk of the work has been running has been starting to convert Saric to DSL2, and they're trying to work out um, how to make sub workflows to build all the indices. And also, and sorry, and this is with uh, Maxime, Paul, Sylvester, and Frederica. And I'm sorry if I butchered the pronunciation of those names. And uh, the other uh, update is that they're actually running real samples and it's not crashing on the latest dev branch. That's also good, good news. Uh, for RNA Fusion, which is with Maxime Martin, they're just aiming for release, but there's no updates there at the moment. For MAG, um, they fixed uh, a few issues and improved some of their error handlings. Uh, worked primarily on documentation, and they also have a couple of outstanding issues, which is um, there is a non-reproducible, but it does seem to happen every now and then, issue with input files being missing. So this is actually being discussed on the existing pipelines uh, Slack channel, if anyone has any idea. And um, also they have a error on test data with Busco um, when using a scratch uh, parameter. Uh, which doesn't seem to be consistent across different clusters, but that's something else. If someone has experience with Busco or with scratches, that would be useful. And finally, for Diaproteomics, um, the main uh, plan or the main progress has been converting the current code to match the NF core template for, I guess, an initial release. And that is everything so far. All right, perfect. A lot of developments in different fronts, different pipelines. And yeah, exactly. Let, let's stay in contact in the channel in case somebody has ideas of the of the current how to solve the current issues. Okay, so we can move on to the progress with the DSL two and modules um, hackathon team. I think Harshil is going to brief us on this one. Hello. Um, Yes, yeah, so it's been interesting, more battling, I think. Um, we have come up now, I think, with a relatively good prototype to, as for a definition of a module file. Um, so Gregor has been um, doing some great work sort of tracking discussions and stuff, which has been quite tricky because lots of caveats have been coming up in terms of how we standardize things. So for example, um, how do we standardize publishing results and directories. Um, not everyone will want all of the files generated by tools. Um, and so how do we standardize that? How do we standardize, standardize naming the output directories? Uh, that kind of stuff. So I think we've made a little bit of progress there, which is, which is quite nice. Um, we are now almost ready to merge uh, an example module for FastQC, which will be quite helpful for everyone else now adding modules at least to figure out what sort of format we're going for and style and stuff. Um, Phil has also updated um, tools now uh, to uh, install modules in the, in the directory structure that we discussed um, yesterday. So it would be a modules NF core software directory. Uh, and that basically allows for us to extend or add other directories to NF core modules in the future and just make things easier to install that way. Um, so it keeps things a bit flexible. Uh, I personally have been sort of dealing with more of a local implementation and um, I've sort of only today it's twigged how powerful sub workflows are going to be for this kind of thing because, um, you know, just stripping away um, and essentially compartmentalizing different aspects of your pipeline into sub workflows will just make them so much easier to share. So for example, this morning I've created um, uh, a QC uh, and trim sub workflow, which runs fast QC and trim galore. Um, and obviously you can also provide skip parameters for this, which is quite nice. Um, and so you don't have to do much. All of the logic is buried away in that, which tidies things up as well. Um, there's also a map reads one, which runs BWA mem and then sorts and indexes the BAM file as a separate workflow. So these kinds of things, these smaller, smaller components, you can imagine will be quite easy to share. And once we've got NF core modules up and running nicely, um, it, it should just be plug and play, hopefully. Um, 
Yeah, and Jose's been working on um, adding uh, bed tools and stuff, but he's franked from you know being frantic because we keep on changing everything, and he has to update his PRs. Um, so he's been quite patient with that. Uh, and yeah, so there's just lots of people get involved, and then obviously you guys are doing the SARIC stuff. So maybe you want to talk about that, Gisela? Um, yes, yeah, sure. I have I have a question though. First, with the modules, now you've talked about the sub workflows. Um, did you decide, or wasn't there an agreement if adding the sub workflows inside of the main um, .NF or in a separate file? Then? Well, that's that's a great question. Um, so uh, I've been thinking about this, uh, having looked at various pipelines that are already implemented in DSL two. Um, I find it incredibly difficult to figure out what's going on. But if so, if you have a very simple main script and all of your other code is buried away somewhere else in your pipeline repository. You have to then look at 15 scripts to work out exactly what is included and what you're running. And I guess that's one of the biggest downsides of, um, of this whole modular structure is that if you, know, if you really want to get to the crux of what someone is doing, you need, to, you need to really dig in and look at all of these include comments and, and just you know, have a fish around. So, um, yeah, so my plan was um, to actually have an NF core, uh, sorry, not an NF core, so a module sub workflow directory in the pipeline. And that would be where you put all of the sub workflows. I'm still a bit torn as to whether to split those sub workflows up into separate files or to keep them in one sort of main script, because then, like I said, it will just be easier to trace everything. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so probably out of the main script, but um, in terms of splitting up the sub workflows into their own files, I'm not entirely sure yet. Right, yeah, there's, yeah, we can definitely still discuss and see what it, what is the best option there. But yeah, we, we were facing exactly this when, when trying to also have a DSL2 implementation for Sarek yesterday with Rika and Maxim. Yeah, and we were also discussing. We, we we thought one of the at least building the indices. It would be nice to have a sub workflow for building the indices. And then we were thinking, okay, would it be better to include it into the main.nf or in a separate file? And probably it it helps readability for the main.nf to have it in a separate um, uh, file. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's it helps with readability. It doesn't help with traceability. But I guess the decision you have to make there is what's the minimal sort of sub workflow that I could share with someone um, that offers a specific functionality type thing. So, you know, for example, mapping reads, which, you know, will be common to so many different pipelines. You're running BWMM and then typically you have to sort the BAM file and index it. And so then that would warrant being its own sub workflow as opposed to tagging on other things within that sub workflow, for example. Um, so I guess you need to, yeah, you need to look at it from a reusability perspective as well, um, in terms of, you know, making these sub workflows as atomic as possible in a way where you can share them and people can reuse them. So a question from Phil, in sub workflows, is it worth it if it's only a couple of processes? I guess to to have a sub workflow. Yeah, that's 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 again a good question. Um, it, it comes down to a that will ultimately come down to a personal decision as to who's written the sub workflow. But um, I would say possibly not. Uh, so, with the example that I've given you, the Mac reads one, you run BWMM and then you have to run samples sort and then you have to run samples index and then you have to run samples flag stat and then IDX stats and stats and all of those other different processes. And so in that instance, um, I think it's worth it because it buries away all of that code. And also you can imagine people sorting BAM files a lot in their workflows. So they can use that very same sub workflow in different places. Um, however, having said that, I, the, trim, the trim reads sub workflow that I've written is just fast QC and trim, trim galore. But the beauty about that I found now is that when you when you specify the take directive directive in the sub workflow, you can also specify um, additional um, additional values for, say, for example, skip fast QC and skip trimming. 
And so all of that logic is handled within the sub workflow there, which is quite nice and it's really tidy. So if you have, um, you know, if for example, you, when you run it, um, this will all become a bit more clearer when I have a proper implementation together. But um, when, you, when you actually execute the sub workflow within the main script, you have your, your workflow name, the input channel, which would be your reads. And then you type, for example, params.skipfastq and params.skip trimming. And so that way you can provide the parameter files to that. And it buries away all of that logic in terms of creating channels and stuff. If that answers the question. <laughs> yes, I think it does. Um, okay. Um, uh, actually, one question that I also had there is um, how does the conditional execution of modules there work? And, and also, I mean, I guess that works pretty similarly as the processes, but of, I was wondering even if it's possible to have co conditional execution of sub workflows themselves. Uh, yes, I don't see why not. Uh, you, would, you would just be using... Um, you would just be using if statements, I guess, in the main script for that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah. All, all of all of the all of the process type skipping would happen within the sub module itself uh, by the provision of the appropriate boolean parameters to that sub workflow. Um, all of the, so there's different layers of complexity here because then you also have. Um, you could have skipping logic within a process itself because say for example um you have a merge this is something i stumbled on yesterday say you have picard merge sam files as a module file right now as input that would take a list of bam files for example but say for example um you have an instance where you know you've you haven't sequenced the same sample multiple times so you've only got one bam file and so running picard merge SAM files doesn't make any sense anymore because you, you've got one BAM file already. So then you need conditional logic there to deal with that as well. And so in the end, I just decided to use um, a soft link and evaluating the size of the, the list. Um, but yeah, there's different level, levels of, of where you would evaluate all of this. Um, and yeah, so anything that's process skipping, I would say in the sub workflow is that if that's where you're implementing it, Anything that sub workflow skipping would be in the main script um, and anything that's um, skipping something based on the logic in the process would be defined there. Perfect, yeah, we'll try it out then, see how it works and otherwise we'll use your examples. Yeah, uh, good. So we have still the, late, the last um, hackathon team and this is the NF Core Tools um, Hackathon project. Somebody could yes, brief us. Yes, I'll, I'll briefly say what we're doing. So um, from Phil's side, he was working on NF Core Sync to get some more tests in. So we have more tests and some amount of refactoring there. Steven wrote the function so that the the NF Core tools now checks uh, for the which version, oh, if a new version is available, basically. Um, and I was still working on the automated documentation rendering where I have it now in HTML, so now I have to do some JavaScript magic on it. And just something because I'm looking forward to it, uh, I just saw uh, that. Phil wrote a draft for the first uh, newly implemented uh, command line renderer, which will make, it's now for linting, but we'll see where, where else it will go, which has really, really nice progress paths. <laughs> so if you're excited about that, look forward for that. Nice, thank you uh, for the briefing, Matthias. Okay, and okay, unless, Nobody, uh, somebody else has some remarks to make right now. Then we can close um, this session and we'll meet you tomorrow for the talk. Then let's hack again.